this is my mean fish who thinks that he owns everything. He's rude and he needs some therapy. But yeah, anyways, not really his fault. <laughs> this is my beautiful roses, organic and so far aphid free, but um, yeah. I bought this really crappy plant from Lowe's last year and it had like the most beautiful flower on it like this color and I was like I have to have that and I was also like researching roses at the time and some roses don't smell and so <clears throat> really I personally like when they smell because I like to dry them and <clears throat> like keep them and whatever you know like eventually I want to see other things I could do with roses but until then I'll just smell them mmm they smell so good so my garden is in full throttle flowers are blooming and trees are growing and everything's really awake right now it's super sunny a little bit of wind today so let's see what i got out here these little babies are nasturtiums i found out that nasturtium flowers are edible and they attract bees so it's definitely something I want in my garden definitely gonna be seeing what they taste like and what I could do with them um, I bought some oregano from a really pretty um, nursery in Riverbank but it smells good Yeah, but there's this nursery, it's called Morris in Riverbank, California. It's about 25 minutes from where I live, and it is such a beautiful nursery. I've never been there before. I love most nurseries, especially like the small guy, but um, yeah, this nursery was pretty badass. <laughs> it had like everything. I did a lot more flowers this year. Um, these, I think, are lupine, but I planted them quite a while ago, and um, they're barely popping up, so this pot could have easily got contaminated, like a lot of my plants do. I'll plant something, and something else will pop up next to it, and it won't be what I planted. Um, but if this is how lupine looks when it first um, sprouts, then I guess it is lupine, hopefully. So this year, I planted a bunch of stuff. Um, and one thing that I use every single night is chamomile. And most of chamomile comes from Egypt, from what I saw. There's a couple other places it comes from, but mostly everything you can order is like from Egypt. So, try and grow my own. I imagine I have to grow quite a bit, but I always had this thing like, I always have this thing about my whole life and everything that I do, like it's not gonna be successful. That's the way my brain works and I'm currently like, getting out of that. I am getting out of that, but it takes a while to change how you think. But when you plant a seed and it actually grows, it's like a validation that you can do something. You can help to create, um, which is very rewarding to me personally. So when the chamomile actually started growing, <laughs> 
I was surprised. Like, it almost has that chamomile smell already. Like, almost. But the flowers aren't it's getting ready to flower. And so I planted a few of these out in the front of my house under this huge um, tree that I have out front. And I planted it on two different sides to see what it likes. And chamomile likes sun. It really does. But it could do okay in um, part shade because it's still growing. But the really tall plants like this, they have sun like quite a bit. And here's some babies that I have grown and then I put babies in here this is like a lemon tree that I sprouted from seed but I went ahead and put chamomile in here because you know use the pot more chamomile yeah so pretty cool because I drink chamomile every night and it would be nice to you know drink something that I produced so I got some more herbal type seeds and they're actually sprouting. <laughs> I'm all excited. And Nikki, she always needs so much love, poor baby. She don't feel good. She needs a lot of love. Okay, watch out love bug. Gonna have to give her a little rub down cause she's like wanting love. She'll just straight bash you with her big old head so that you'll rub her. So, yeah, I don't know if she's spoiled or she really feels like crap. I know she does feel like crap sometimes, but she is very, like, demanding with her rubs. Aren't you? Oh, sweet, sweet. Look at me at her boo boo. Okay, enough of Nikki. <laughs> so, I got right here. Oop, mammoth basil. It's like a, I believe a Thai basil. Like what you would put in like ramen and stuff. That's what I do anyways. Regular basil. I don't know what regular means. I know there's different types of basils, but like this is the basil I would use for like spaghetti sauce and stuff. I got fever few actually sprouting. That's exciting for me. Mullen has not sprouted yet mugwort started sprouting and then I have some echinacea which I have already grown before um or like the purple coneflower I believe they're like the same or similar still learning here but yeah so this is exciting for me oh I might have a sprout right here for the oops the mullein Maybe Mullen doesn't like to be watered as much as I've been watering these seedlings, but they're outside, so I don't know. Oh, and I also got an elderberry, some pumpkins, some okra. I'm not super, like, big on okra. I bought some, and um, it was, like, pickled okra, and yeah, it tastes like a pickle, but, like, I don't know. I'm not from the south so maybe I'm just not used to it and I do believe a lot that things are like acquired so um I'll definitely try it again to see if I change my mind so I'm gonna grow some maybe I'll like it fresh but yeah so what I have a lot in the garden is these avocado trees that I sprouted from seed and what we're gonna do is graft like Hass avocado onto them and we ordered a few other varieties from the sky online that aren't Hass, but um, they're still really good. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do that. We have a bunch of these. I'm gonna go ahead and try and graft some avocado trees. Avocados are expensive, so you can get a good producing avocado tree. Like, I mean, that's everything. If you needed food and say like some 
crazy stuff happened, we got cut off or whatever. Like, you know, Mexico isn't sending any, which who knows, you know, but like, it's just nice to have your own food or a backup plan sometimes, like, um, and be responsible for our own, you know, food, our own livelihood. Um, where's my avocado tree? It just, <laughs> it's right behind me. Okay. So here's the avocado tree we bought. And once it gets a little bit bigger, we'll probably start using this to harvest cuttings and um, graft them onto our baby seed sprouts. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that because um, I'm not like the biggest meat eater. I was vegan for a year and I still really agree with veganism. Um, it was just hard when I transitioned and to transition my family and we all did it and uh, we definitely learned a lot from it and um, definitely you would say had a healthy impact on our eating habits now. Um, I would say a lot of days I eat vegan. Um, I don't need meat all the time. Like sometimes I'll crave protein, um, fat. And I might eat something, but um, me personally, I like living off of bananas and avocados and just um, foraging from the garden because, I don't know, it just has like, it's more fulfilling and I'm not like starving over here, so it seems to work for me. So right here, I have a fever few growing and some yarrow from um, inside and then I brought them out here and uh, they didn't adapt super quickly to the real sunlight as opposed to my germinating light. So, you know, I'm kind of starting to lean more towards uh, direct sow and uh, starting things outside. Um, of course, nature knows best and nature knows when the right time for whatever plant it is. So um, it's good to like line up seeds when they're supposed to be sown and where they're gonna grow out in the sun you know in the heat of the sun the harsh sun like you start them indoors they're not gonna be used to that so yeah and I have some watermelons here here's an example of watermelons so like uh, germinated out here in the sun as opposed to a watermelon that I germinated indoor and um, it didn't do very good it's still trying to grow. It might do okay, um, but I feel like if I would have started it out here, it would already be like as big as those sprouts. Those sprouts are pretty new. Um, and they're already outdoing this other sprout that I totally started way freaking earlier. So, and it's also getting like burned. It's not happy. And there you go, like. Does that look like a very happy sprout to you? Not really, but um, good thing I have other ones to replace it. But uh, this is kind of example, like this is what I'm learning. Like the seeds kind of like to be sown, some do, where they're gonna grow. Um, and the sunlight that they're gonna have, they wanna adapt to those, um, situations while they're sprouting yeah um I, I know other people uh, sprout indoor and they have complete success and they um know better than me so I'm pretty much just showing an example of what's happened to me um so this is just my experience like I know some people are really good at transplanting and sprouting indoors and I'm just learning you know um so this is just what's happened with me. I just, uh, I'll probably next year directly sow a lot of things. So here's another example um, of some plants that weren't very happy, sown too early um, and transplanted. So this one right here is a cucumber that I had um, sown indoor and transplanted out here. It's kind of stayed that size for a long time. I imagine it will make it 
but here's one that um, was sewn like a couple days ago and these two so they already look healthier and happier than this one um, yeah so uh, I tried to get a leg up um, a leg up on the garden and I tried to do things early because I was kind of traumatized by last year and how nothing turned out <laughs> I mean, some things did, but um, I didn't plant early enough. I planted way too late. So this year I planted too early. So I guess I have to learn everything the hard way. Um, plant when you know the temperature is right because your seeds may suffer. So here's some bean plants. So this is a bean plant this one is the one that did the best and this died um beans don't like cold so we had a few cold days this one made it i don't know why it was i would think it wouldn't make it as much as the ones in the ground but um but i sewed these maybe a few days ago and look at it like wow it's ready to go here's one that's been in the ground early not doing much not very happy these ones directly sewn a couple days ago already outdoing these more examples yeah so with beans they want their warmth and they don't want to be planted early because they ain't going to do much. Um, yeah. Um, another thing I'm pretty proud of, which is kind of weird because it's like starting to get warmed up, but I watched a few videos about um, like crops that want to be in the shade. And um, cabbages <clears throat> don't want a lot of hardcore light I think they're more of a winter crop but they can handle it more than let's say spinach and stuff which will just bolt so these are my cabbages and I, I um, harvested other the other cabbages when they were smaller and they were good but I thought since my garden is a home garden and organic like oh they're just gonna get that big they're gonna be small you know so I'm just gonna harvest them <clears throat> well I left a few in the ground and when they got some sun look at what they did got this one and this one those are pretty big compared to the other ones I harvested so apparently cabbage can handle some sun so I cleared out my strawberry bed. Um, we've only gotten a few strawberries every year. Like uh, I planted a few plants and you know, they like, got a couple. Like the, my sons would come grab them before, you know, we would never get like a whole bowl full or anything. Um, but this year I do need to feed these strawberries though. They kind of haven't had anything new in here for a while. Just some fish fertilizer um, and some bacteria I made to feed the mycorrhizal fungi that I learned off of uh, his name is the weedy gardener he's this cool hippie photographer guy who um, gives tips on amazing gardening and how to take care of your soil so I definitely need to do that for the strawberries but I just want to show you what the strawberries look like this year and I did uh, harvest a bunch yesterday and there's a bunch um, eaten away at. I have a gopher and I don't know what to do about it because I don't want to kill it. But um, yeah, my gopher makes a new hole in my garden every morning. I get a new present of where the hole will be. Um, so yeah, we'll see what I have to do about that. <laughs> so here are the strawberries. Um, 
I need to find a good method of keeping them off the ground because they get, you know, mushy when they're watered. And water only in the morning because you don't want them sitting in water overnight. There's the ones that the little gopher ate. And these ones are all partially or almost there. Need a little bit more reddening. My garden is a bird haven. They love it here. There's plenty of water. There's bugs. And I do have a bird feeder over there, but I haven't seen them eat too much of it. So I chose these alyssums to add into my garden. I think they're actually edible. Um, and then those flowers that you see, they come in white a lot and they just spread like crazy in your grass. We have them out front, but we have like white and purple. Um, but yeah, these are like the little things I added in so that I could bring more pollination to my garden and just more beauty in general. Like I like walking around and seeing the flowers. So this jalapeno is from last year. I overwintered it and I tried to protect it. Um, I don't think it's super happy because it's not really sprouting a, a ton, but it did sprout these. And so I think it's time for it to wake up again. Um, I did plant some more right here recently. So hopefully I get a new um, pepper plant and then I'll overwinter these ones because I think this one might not be too happy so yeah this is the example of the gopher like I had all this stuff planted back here and um, this is an easy spot for the gopher to like dig up so some of my lettuces got messed up but that's okay um, I'm just gonna have to maybe do more of this method and put things in um, pots like this uh, spinach Oh yeah, there's some more flowers I added. Happy flowers. And there you go. Lots of fun stuff going on in the garden. Yeah, so this is uh, Central Valley, California. Um, not the Bay Area. We're not surfers here. We mostly are farmers and working class because we can't afford the Bay Area. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have a lot of sun and it's good to grow food here. And uh, it's zone 9B. I, am at, I believe it's zone 9B. Been putting that the whole time. Um, so yeah, this is what we look like today in zone 9B. It's possible to grow a bunch of food. And I always encourage you to just try with one plant, maybe do um, tomato or a cucumber and it's pretty rewarding. And it just tastes way different than the store. Like there's no comparison. So um, yeah, we need to get closer to nature. We need to connect with our food. We need to connect with our environment and each other and yeah i'm making a video right now but we need to get off our phones and just go be in nature and go be one with our mother where we came from it's good for the whole, the soul um definitely one of my coping skills for all of the crap that i've dealt with and brought upon myself in my life um yeah so uh like subscribe and namaste have a great day guys